enjoyed talking to you, man. And uh, so we were talking about the promotional stuff, about how your promotional skills as being a promoter and evil were kind of going back and forth when we kind of left off yesterday about comparing the two. And like, when, when did you actually first meet him again? You said you didn't meet him until early. Uh, I later. met him in 1997 at a boxing event for yeah. with Top Rank. Who, yep. Who did the Snake River Canyon. Yeah. Promoted that. And he sat right next to me, and that's where I met him. Then I, yeah. when I ran a casino, I brought him back in 2001. And a casino you were telling me is was right here in Tulsa, right? It was out, about an hour out of Tulsa. Okay, gotcha. But that's when we became really good friends. Okay. After that, we started talking every other day. <laughs> All the time, eh? Several times a day. He really? Me. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And then when did you, was it, I mean, obviously it was after Evil passed, when you had started your crazy collection or everything? Yes. Yeah. I had a I had a motorcycle. I collect vintage motorcycles. Okay, I love them. It's like art. So, really? I, I had, but how many of those do you? Oh, I got rid of most of them. I I got rid of all that wife, you know. But I, yeah. I had a uh, hundred and eighty vintage motorcycles. Oh my god! Wow. And uh, then I eighty bikes. Then I started uh, picking up different things, and that's where Jeff Lowe called oh, me. Yeah, and he you know he used to manage. Uh, Robbie Knievel or yeah. Mrs. Agent or something. He had yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how he got it, but I bought a, a jump bike and then he turned me on to, he discovered a jump helmet from Evil from King's Island crash. So, okay. Wow. So I got that. I got the super van where he carried the. the yeah, we were just checking out the old bread truck. Yeah. yeah. I had a guy full time, like Lathan, tracking down Evil member billion. That's all he did. We had his contracts. Crazy. I worked a lot with Crystal Knievel. Got a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Straight yep. from Evil. Okay, but um, yeah, I, I I can't tell you all the stuff. I I, I know I was the, the largest collector in the world at one time. Really? Before Lathan came. Before Lathan came. Yeah, yeah, and I and I ended up with the big semi too. Yeah, you end up. That's well. That's where Lathan yeah. got it from. Was from you, right? Yes. yes. Wow. So how? But well, so when did you start, and how did how long did it take you to complete the collection? Oh, you never complete a collection like yeah. that. It's just like it's just it gets addictive, and and I watch Lathan, and I just scratch my head, said, "Brother, I know what you're going through." Man, um, it's when he came around and the museum came around. Evil wanted me to do a museum, yeah, outside the casino, and we did drawings. He, we really? said, "Oh yeah," he sent me all kinds of things, and then Kelly shut it down. Uh, really yeah he goes it needs to be in vegas and you know what he's right you know so i get it yeah it doesn't need to be in vegas so that so so in the end there was evil was still alive but kelly was still running the show though right is that all kind of demographic of all i want well i don't know what show there was to be ran at that time Evil yeah. was kind of laid back and kind of a lonely yeah. guy and, and yeah he, i don't think he was ever out of it he was always sharp but he was i think yeah. he was lonely and, and yeah. bored and uh just doing appearances Okay, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. okay, gotcha. So in the end, so by the time you finished up in the end, and I think I was just asking you before, now you kind of got rid of the collection and donated and got most of it sold at the museum yes. now with Lathan right. Deal, right? Right. Okay. And I actually, um, a year ago yesterday, yeah. I had an event in Topeka, Kansas, okay. at their big arena. It was for Showtime Network, a boxing event. Yeah. And I knew that truck they kept saying get up here and and uh it was two blocks away the museum really? so i walked there and mike the owner brought me through treating like gold but that was a year yes a year ago yesterday and when I, I saw it on my phone it brings up memories really so i saw that truck even when i owned it i never saw laid eyes on it really i paid storage on it for three years oh my god six hundred dollars a month and <laughs> never went down and looked at it and uh that's when um Jeff Lowe called me and, you know, yeah, talked me into. I didn't know there was a safe in it until after I sold him. So, oh, that's what that's oh, yeah, you're yeah. talking about the safe. Yeah, you didn't realize. Yeah, you didn't realize. Yeah, he, going he, out that that's before. the one thing he forgot to tell me. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 <laughs> so when you're going through that way, so what was the what was the coolest piece you think you've ever found, or what was the best thing that you were like, wow, that's that's really amazing. Like, when well, back the the helmet was was cool. Little things that. Uh, like the super van it was a refrigerator guy had it really and he'd deliver you know refrigerators and everything else and it that ended up it ended up in a field in montana outside of butte that's so, crazy to me so we discovered it and you can look down the side of the wall you can see the evil yeah in, involved in the side of his logo and everything yeah yeah 
So, uh, and you could see where all these little things where they cut a hole to put the control center. I, I like stuff like that. But the yeah. thing that I like the most, I had a lot of handwritten letters, contracts, him getting upset and negotiating multi-million yeah. dollar toy deals signed. And Yeah. The, I mean, the toy deals, I mean, man, we have a lot of people talking to me about toys this last week over here. Yeah. Every step, because, I mean, I guess this is just my perspective of it. But be, this was before Star Wars and all the other ones and all the big, big ones came out. I mean, he was like one of the biggest toy deals in history to be signed, wasn't he? He, he was. He was just such a great marketer. Yeah. You know, he... Uh, Is that number right? About, it was like a $15 million, million dollar deal in 74. You know, I don't... I'm not Lathan, so I, Lathan's yeah, like yeah, the yeah, encyclopedia. Yeah. I don't know like, how no, much he did. Times. I, know I know he went. I know he even went through the money. Yeah. Um, but yeah. he... I, I mean... Yeah, it, the, the thing is, Americana is the evil toys. You look back to kids right. in the seventies yeah. jumping. That's all it was. Jumping motor. I mean, jumping their bicycles over yeah. a board and bricks, and ended up in the emergency room. And uh, the toys. I mean, that's just an icon of history. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, we we were debating this weekend when we were going to put up the second part of the display with all the toys, and I said no. I said we got to. I said that's where it brought me on board mm -hmm. in the seventies, being a seventies kid. And now they're remaking some of the stuff, you know, the California creation car. Right. And we were talking about that, and everybody is, they're drawn to the vehicles, of course. Right. But that's been our busiest spot, is just vehicles and the original boxes and stuff over there. People are just going nuts looking at all the toys and the and the original vintage stuff from the 70s. is crazy. Because they relate to it. Every, every boy yeah. had one. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people didn't even know, but then in 75, they only introduced the, the Dairy Darring thing, you know, for a little yeah. bit for the girls. and. I stumbled across that stuff years ago, and I didn't even know really what it was. Yeah. And because nobody, nobody even advertised it. And now that I got it out there, everybody's like, "Oh my gosh, you don't know how much is it?" And whatever. Now that now they want to collect it. You yeah. know, yeah. But it, it's pretty. It's, it's. I mean, it's crazy how one man changes the industry so much. Yeah, I mean, it's. And uh, you know, I said this earlier. One thing that just every wide world of sports, you yeah. know, you, yeah. you'd see evil, and and the thing that I. When I finally got to see the the uh, semi in Topeka, I guess it's going yeah. to Vegas. I mean, they did just such a masterful job. Had the oh, original furniture in it. It's, and I'm like, it's epic, man. It's cool. And I, I, it was almost like a religious experience, man. When I saw that thing and compared, like, man, I used, I used to own this and everything. Now I'm sitting in it. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. And then you realize after they restored it. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's like it, it's. I guess it's like it takes you back, like a like a like a. Uh, spiritual movement thing is done because when we were kids even watching that i bet you i watch a dumb documentary a hundred times that with lathman not ever redoing stuff yeah no and i see it every time you see the you see it come out again the last of that piece where it's all out and done it's just like it takes you it takes you way back it takes you right well back. just him on wide world of sports i remember the highlight is that they'd always be standing outside the semi dressing room waiting on him to come yeah. out just sitting yeah. there and they'd be talking it's going to be soon he'd open the door and come out like a king and, yeah always <laughs> yeah with his cane and and uh what a showman he was you know? he was uh i think uh, a couple years back we were uh more people looking at the toys now we were well, i think i always used to compare him there was only two kings in the 70s yeah. one guy had to sell millions of records in the stadium yeah. and the other guy jumped more like this yeah he, he, um, evil and elvis evil and elvis yep it's all yeah. over, man. It's so cool and uh they'll forever be the kings you know yeah Help you forever the kings. What is your? Uh, who would you compare him to in your? If you're in your boxing industry, compare. Oh, uh, he'd be the Muhammad Ali of boxing, you know. Yeah. Because it was, you know, he was the same way. Oh, absolutely. So. No one, you, you know, for an entertainer as yeah. far as a, a stunt daredevil. No, yeah. no one and, and he lives on today through all these X Games. He's like the Godfather, and yeah, and uh, yeah, people don't realize that. You know, these bikes today, it's like landing on a pillow. The suspension's yeah. so soft. I mean, it, he'd be like jumping on a road king. Yeah, I don't know what he'd be doing like if he had a, if he had an actual like, oh, bike now to start on. It'd been great. It would have been great. Yeah, because yeah. then it would be still going now to this day. Yeah. You know, and they were, what do you think the difference was between, do you think it was just a bad time after the 70s ended and everything happened like uh, by 80 with the evil ending? Is that the real reason why Robbie doesn't get the accolades that he did before? Um, because I mean, he did what three hundred consecutive jumps and thirty. I just records. think he was overshadowed by his father. 
Yeah. You know, and he was also breaking through with the new dirt bikes and the suspension. Everybody would say, yeah. well, that's not the same. You can't compare. I remember these conversations. Yeah, that's what, that's what I, yeah. knew you, I knew you knew about it. So I'm yeah. touch base on with you. Yeah, and, and people would never give Robbie his dues, even though he'd be jumping a hundred feet farther or, or whatever. But it's like yeah. it's like, uh, you, you know, that's not evil. Go do that on a street bike. Go do it on a Triumph. Yeah, you know, and it seems like you know, and I've watched a million pieces on, on Robbie, and even the one that Latham just did on him again too. And he just said he's always, you know, chasing evil. You can never, yeah. you can never be, be, you'll never be his dad. Yeah, never be his dad, which is which is kind of sad, but you I mean. I think he deserves a lot of accolades for what he did. He does. And, you know, they, I, I never knew Robbie. I, I met him on a couple of press tours when we had Tommy Morrison fighting George Foreman. He he went on tour with us, so I knew him a little bit. But I, I don't think they had a the proper father and son relationship. Evil was pretty hard dad. And, well, it's, uh, yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. And even at the end, Evil, when he'd call me, he'd talk about everything. Yeah, I mean, evil, even for evil. pulling the shoot on that rocket over there yeah. and just everything <laughs> about his son and this and that and uh he you know i kind of hurt for robbie yeah yeah i think a lot of people did when in the end and i don't know how evil was in the end i mean you talked to him all the way till the end didn't you i talked to him all the time he called me yeah constantly on the phone wow yeah and then he was uh when in the end you were you still going to see him then no i you know i didn't see him for for years we were just in total communication we were he was wanting me to do the museum for him yeah you know there's some newspaper articles about that he, he talks about this okay. and uh i mean we he'd be calling me up at eight o'clock at night are you watching american idol <laughs> man that elvis presley uh pieces yeah it's, yeah it's just a hologram they did on him. can you believe just, yeah just basic talk just basic talk yeah so he was a in the end he was down there's guy i mean he's still I mean, he was so evil. He was the the nicest, kindest, bitterest, angriest man I've ever <laughs> known. <laughs> he was. I heard he was very tough to deal with. I mean, even the people that knew him in the seventies or whatever, you know, he was. It was pretty much his way. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh yeah. I mean, he was. He was the king. I mean, and, uh, and it'd be. I pity the person that worked for him because he he would be hard on. We got we caught up with a couple of them over in uh, California when we were doing a couple pieces for the doc series, and we talked with John Hood and a couple of the other ones, and he just said the same thing, man. There's like you know he get done with the jump and get him up, get him to a microphone, and that's all he wanted to do, and then it was all business, like go go go, you know, and yeah, where are we gonna be next? Which is crazy to me, you know. Yeah, yeah. So he he didn't like. Um... It took a while for me to warm up with him because I was a boxing promoter. I was yeah. running a casino too, but you know, the, he he didn't like how he was treated through pop rank on the Snake River Canyon jump. Well, that was a big controversy. Oh, that yeah. was huge. So he he knew I was friends with Bob Arum. So it took a while for us to, to, to get, get to know, together, to get to know each other a little bit. Because so he, he'd always say, "Man, you know, don't you ever call yourself a pitch man?" I'm like, "What's a pitch? Man? <laughs> What's a pitch man?" <laughs> <laughs> So everybody, everybody determines that the biggest thing, the controversy in 1974, when that was going to be mainstream news that he went across the Carrot Canyon, but obviously Nixon just got uh, uh, pardoned, didn't he? Or, 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 I'm not there, sure. There was, there was there's something that uh, Lays put on there that they think that he superseded the news media and Nixon did at the time for that. Oh, I, I believe that. I mean, yeah. every kid was... It, to me, as a kid, during yeah. that era, it was the same thing as getting in front of the TV when uh, the spaceship landed on the moon. Yeah. We took sure. our first yeah. walk on we the moon. It was one of those on. deals that was promoted so heavy. Everybody was just sitting there and it's a wide world of sports. Yeah. And it was free back then. It was free back then. Yeah. And I don't know that the people that, I mean, they would come and camp like, okay, so he's going he's gonna to jump on Saturday, September 8th, 1974, you know, blah, blah, say it's 2 o'clock. Yeah. People were camping out for like a week straight. Yeah, with their families. Yeah, just waiting and waiting. What was it? Fifty, sixty thousand people sitting in a canyon. Well, and that was that was uh, families, hippies, bike gangs. That it was, I don't know crazy. if I'd want to bring my family. Well, to that. I think in the end we all know what happened. In the end, with all the semis getting overturned and burning them down when they ran out of beer, yeah. and it was nobody knows those histories unless you really dig into it. You yeah. know, it's there. It's there, man. Yeah. When I saw those discs, I'm like, wow, that actually happened. You know, then the whole story of evil paying the Hells Angels to run security and all sort of stuff. It's just, <laughs> I, you know, today that would be a lawsuit before it even happened. Oh, the the phone call would be a lawsuit. Yeah. 
the phone call would be a federal prison term. Yeah. It's just crazy to me the way times have changed. You know, and he comes walking out with a briefcase full of money, and you're like, yeah, go do crowd control for me, you know? It doesn't work that way no more. <laughs> That's great. I mean, uh, so much history with this guy. It's great. So, so what are you up to these days? Are you fully retired? Or, you know, well, like, I've, I've been coming back and forth from Bali. My yeah. daughter lives there, and I've yeah. been there three times last That's what year. That's your thing. A 40 hour flight. 40 hour flight. So, Ooh. I still do, uh, I still work, with, you know, side by side with Bob Arum on some ESPN. Do you really? Oh, yeah. Okay. And he's 90, he's turning 92 years old. And you guys are both still doing box promos. Oh, we have dinner. We laugh. He keeps me up late. And I'm like, I'm going to bed. No, you're well, not. No, you're- We're going to go have a drink. And I'm like, <laughs> God. Oh, I mean, the guy is a machine. Oh, he's man. 92 and he's sharp as a tag. But yeah, really? still, I, I still play some shows for him. I play for other promoters. I have some. Yeah. Uh, I I promote Tommy Morrison's son who's fighting and some different different fighters. How old was Tommy when he passed away? Tommy was 44. 44 wow. yeah. so in the obviously every machine gun that was based on uh that was the boxer that was in that was was that that wasn't the real tommy and rocky fight. oh it was that was tommy playing it tommy was really gun. tommy that right was really tommy he okay. was uh 19 or 20 years old then that's yeah. where i met him that's yeah. where you met him in the rocky mm-hmm. you've done a lot of work with the stallones obviously right i i'm very close to the stallones uh, yeah. frank stallone he yeah. you know called me yesterday i talked to him yeah. three four yeah. times a week yeah. sylvester i've known him for over 30 years yeah uh he was shooting the tulsa king and i own the mickey mantle childhood home in Columbus, yeah. oklahoma so. i love that series by the tulsa king and i heard it's finally coming back for a second series oh yeah he's, he's doing a second series so, yeah that's so cool. he calls me he goes we're gonna shoot we're going to shoot in commerce. Can we use your house? And I'm like, come on. <laughs> so I got to hang out with him here last year for a couple oh, of days. Cool. And, yeah. and, uh, during the Tulsa King, great guys. Both yeah, of them. Both of them, are, both of them are, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've met, uh, um, met Stone a couple of times in the eighties where when we were doing, yeah. you know, the Rocky things and you go see him at a signing or something like that. But everybody says he's a great person. The guys are really, really nice guy. Oh, I went out. Oh, he is a great guy. Yeah. Um, when Rocky five was, gosh, I think it was, 1990 okay uh tommy and i went out clubbing with him in, really? in uh hollywood and yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that's, all I, that's all i'm gonna say that's i was married uh, i was married like no guys no <laughs> <laughs> i just got married but it was uh it was hanging fun. with stallone in the single days eh? yeah it was fun yeah i'm sure it was fun <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah was he um how was tommy in the end i mean we're doing stuff i mean was he was he like the the character he portrayed on the movie that wasn't really was tommy tommy came from a very violent upbringing and he always struggled with it yeah uh, his father was pretty rough on him really really rough yeah um, he 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 reminded me a lot of mickey mantle when he was 19 he hit fame out of nowhere yeah the movie and the women he, he he had a hard time handling that that fast yeah and then uh, that day in vegas where he failed his hiv test and I yeah just him, i had to i had to set him down and tell him yeah and uh he was never the same he tried to do the right thing and then he went in denial about it then he got really involved in substance and make him feel better he's it's so bad it was know, sad somebody that was that great you know because yeah. he was he was, a, he was an amazing athlete yeah yeah an incredible puncher man just but yeah, oh, well, yeah yeah he's a lot of fun to watch all the years of you promoting who was the uh who was your uh heaviest hitter tommy tommy that left hook was just really oh my gosh he he when he knocked out razor ruddick it was one punch razor's feet went up over his head and he hit the canvas out cold went up over his feet yeah what what round was that round five round five yeah man that's crazy that's crazy so all the all the years you're doing so what year or how many years all together you've been boxing 32 32. And then um, a couple of years ago, I got a call to promote Jake Paul. So going from old school media to this YouTuber, you know, yeah, Jake yeah. is. He, oh, yeah. You got, I, I had no idea you were tied with Jake Paul. Well, yeah. I promoted his top first four arena shows. Really? And then my son's a boxing promoter now. Yeah. So it's, he can relate to that more than me. It's a whole different marketing and media. And yeah. so my, I backed Time off and now my yeah. son, Bryce Holden's doing it. Really? Me. Yeah. So, so Jake Paul right now is where, where do you, where do you see him at? 
Well, I think he's good for boxing. He brings in so many people, but you know, he, he's not a, a world competitor, but no. he's a great fighter. I mean, he's yeah. only fought 10 times. What do you yeah, want? I mean, I mean no that, amateur career. Well, and then, you know, they made him, they made him famous right away. You know what I mean? I mean, he got YouTube fame or whatever. You want he made himself famous. He made himself famous. No one, I mean, you, you know, when, when I did shows with Derek, I just sat back and watched the show and did all the promotion. Yeah. This and that Jake's one of one of those guys like evil. That's a showman. He's he, definitely that, a showman. He's yeah. always challenging somebody. He's always making yeah. videos and blah, blah. He wants people to hate him as much as they like him. Cause they boo him. That just so oh, they buy a ticket, they, they buy a ticket and they want yeah. to see him. And when he's, and he's pretty much on top of everything right now. You know, yeah. I, um, I haven't worked with him for a year, but like I said, my son is, so yeah. I've kind of backed yeah. out of that, but it was a learning curve for me. Yeah. Dude, was, I mean, we were selling out 20,000 seat arenas. Wow. And just crazy money. Just for that kid. Just for, just for Jake. And he's a young boy. He's a young dude. Yeah. He's, yeah. Yeah. He's mid twenties. Mid twenties. So yeah. that's pretty impressive because he, yeah. he's, he's definitely got the promotional background behind him and everything like that. Yeah. So he's doing, he's really good. And then, good. uh, my most bizarre person i promoted was mickey rourke the the actor yeah oh i know mickey, mickey. i was i was I, <laughs> that was another name i was gonna bring up later but you got it though yeah mickey rourke that's got to be a character in himself yeah uh, i love mickey we're still very very close but i mean he just wanted to be a fighter so we'd go to uh germany yeah gosh he for a four rounder back then it was in the 90s he'd make almost a million dollars Mickey did? Oh my gosh, it was crazy. I mean, he was so huge in the 80s and 90s, and especially oh, in yeah. Germany. And then, you know, we fought him, fought him in the U.S. a few times, and yeah, that was a. So he, so he boxed. So when did he? When did you start promoting with Mickey? I would say it was 91. Okay, so we're talking 30 years ago. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. <laughs> graduate high school in 92. Yeah. So I know. Yeah. yeah. So Mickey Rourke was always still doing stuff, and then. Obviously, he was always still acting and doing stuff too. You know? Right, right. Amazing. He was mainly an actor, but this is something he wanted to do. And uh, I he, started off by putting him on a Tommy Morrison undercard, and then him and I hit it off. Really? really? I talk. I still talk to him every week. Yeah. How, well, yeah. Because I'm saying, because how old is Mickey now? I mean, sixties. Right? He wouldn't. Uh, he lies about it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Rourke, I could definitely yeah, do that. Yeah. He he doesn't mention it. Mm. But yeah, boxing's. Uh, it's it's different than any other sport. It's just it's. I was going to say it's got to be characters and characters and characters. And you know the uh, remember the referee Judge Mills Lane. Oh, let's for get sure. it on you. Yeah. yeah, he left. Always uh, let's get it on when the hand going on. Yeah, always. Yeah, but he was you know he did Holyfield Tyson. He got his ear. Judge, I mean, I call him Judge Mills Lane was the most prominent character in the sport of boxing outside of a fighter. Really, so he left uh, at an athletic commission and gave up refereeing and all that to become my partner as a boxing promoter really so mills and i jumped in it together and we did the biggest show in vegas and things for kid kids were coming like crazy because J mills is known to be this honest guy and then yeah. he, he had that stroke one yeah. night and that was the end of it really yeah man man it's crazy you got so where do you see the where do you see the boxing industry going nowadays what you go where, what you grew up with and what you established on your own it's it's so much different um uh, it's almost feast or famine it's always these big shows yeah uh you don't see it's hard to build a fighter now it's hard to you, you don't have these stages of usa so tuesday night like, fights yeah. and the smaller shows and they and they kind of come up through the ranks yeah they're it, not coming it, up through the ranks anymore like you said there's no amateur stuff yeah and amateurs are suffering everything's suffering and yeah. uh except for the big big money fight so if you're trying to build a kid it's going to cost you a fortune that's it's tough that's too bad you know yeah and now, so right now you don't have anybody in management or no promoting anybody oh, right? i do i do i do you really yeah. yeah how many do you have right now I've got three or four. No, I've got four. Four? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, i got four kids. You'll never, yeah, you, you'll never stop, with you? I've tried. It's like <laughs> collecting motorcycles. You try, you, you get rid You know, I, I got rid of my whole collection museum, and then, you know, I had to get a couple for the garage. And then there's, yeah, you, know, you got a couple more in the garage. Yeah, whatever. yeah, it's, yeah I know. It's how same that thing goes. with boxing. It's in your blood. It's, uh, it's just, it's such a adventurous life spent yeah. 30 years in it i mean it's you know, probably, i worked with don king several times i worked with everybody he's a character i can imagine i love don king but he's a great businessman uh, don king uh if you have a solid contract yeah you're good yeah you know he uh and, and a fun guy yeah 
<laughs> what about uh of course i mean can't talk about uh, stop uh talk about boxing without uh bringing up tyson's name but where, where, how do you think he's doing these days he's still out there i see him all the time on social media it's i think that movie he was on the hangover just blew him out as far yeah as, but he you know Ty, tyson wasn't the best boxing boxer in history heavyweight no he's oh. one of the best but. yeah well i mean everybody says he's the best heavyweight champion in the world and they always was well let's go back to marketing whenever yeah. you have a guy in the ring saying i'm going to kill you and eat your children you're going to yeah. get the news you and, the news. and you bite somebody's ear off and spit it in the ring you're going to get this. so and tyson's the only heavyweight i know before the bell rings they put him face to face fight's over this guy's yeah. already peed his pants yeah yeah and yeah. and he's beat him already through intimidation i That's mean true. i've seen that so many times really man. oh yeah with tyson he's he's, he's very intimidating huh he's has to be the most intimidating boxer in history really i think so wow wow that's crazy because i know he compared himself to sugar rangers but i mean he did i mean even in the that was in the uh, late 80s early 90s when tyson's career was going on but he would intimidate the hell out of somebody just staring him down yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah I mean, and they saw what he could do to him you know knock him out in, in the time. first round he didn't first come round. out and feel you out he came out and tried to take your head off so you, <laughs> you give him the intimidation and that and then yeah you, you know it's it's done oh my god that's great that's great so after everything you had going on so come on is there no your fights are you doing are they in vegas or where are you, I mean, you going all over the place uh, my last one was in lake tahoe yeah. i i do one here at the hard rock once or twice a year and i go all over the place okay yeah, yeah. they're uh I, we were doing madison square garden last year um tampa cleveland so yeah I'm, we do them all over the place yeah and then you've got so, you're still, so is it a lot of uh boxing still everything that you did before is all in the united states or do you do stuff worldwide also i did stuff out of worldwide did yeah. you really yeah i did yeah. i oh. did germany hong kong and it's always boxing, right? You would always stay with boxing, not kickboxing, not MMA no, and stuff, right? No, I, yeah, MMA. Come on, <laughs> I, I tell you this. I, I know a lot of people are gonna. This will get your ratings up because <laughs> I'll say it. Uh, boxing is ten times more dangerous than MMA. Yeah. Ten times. MMA looks so violent, this and that, and it's a whole different sport. Yeah, but you know, after a few hits, or you know, they tap out. Yeah. It doesn't go on long. No, try to go twelve rounds. With a guy with a heavyweight throwing yeah. haymakers at you for 12 rounds, getting hit that's in the head. What I, that's what we always compare it to because it's like, okay, they got so many rounds and, and ultimate fighting you see only goes so far, you know? Yeah. And yeah, well, of course, once people see that one, there's going to be, oh my God, he's 20, it's just, whatever. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I'm, I think I'm right. But I think I'm right. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, okay. And, and this is a sad thing to say. This is bad yeah. against boxing, but yeah. Look at the deaths in boxing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, compared you, you, to the drafts at MMA, you, it's and they, the one, you know. You know, even the guys that retired from MMA compared to the guys that retired from boxing, they have permanent damage forever to boxing guys. I mean, it seems like. Well, I've I've experienced two deaths in the ring, I mean, it was mm -hmm. awful. Uh, yeah. It's all the same thing. It's a really? brain a brain hematoma. Really, you know well, they, what, what? You never see a heavyweight. You yeah. never see a heavyweight pass away in boxing. I mean, I'm sure it has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. always guys cutting weight making oh. weight they get dehydrated they okay. don't replenish themselves in time and then they get out there and get hit in the head over and over and, and, then and they get a brain bleed they yeah. get a brain bleed yeah. wow it's really exactly what it is and okay. i've been an advocate of giving them my bees after weighing all the time and you got these idiots that i don't know <laughs> but if you gave them a, an IV afterwards it totally replenish all those it's fluids like, wait, yeah. go on that. okay gotcha wow interesting scenario yeah. never thought that coming yes i was sure i was surprised you were going to say about that <laughs> So what's next? What's coming up in the next couple of weeks for you? Oh, you know, I'm I'm taking it easy right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm not doing a lot. I'm working on a show for my next show is not going to be till May. So okay. no, 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 no. I've got one April 22nd in Deadwood, South Dakota. In really? Cowboy Town. Yeah. Cowboy Town. Yes. Yeah. And that's another big event you got going on. It's a uh, it's ESPN. Uh, oh, their overseas feed that we're doing. Yep. Okay. It's not Bob Mayer and Top Rank. It's a whole different deal. Yeah, totally different yeah it's a smaller. It's not as big of a production. It's a smaller okay. deal. Gotcha, gotcha. And that'll carry on. And, of course, you'll just be kind of doing the dap between back and forth and family stuff, huh? Absolutely. That'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, well, thanks for coming back on here. I love catching up with you. It's been great. And I, it's funny learning a lot of stuff from you, too. 
I appreciate it. It's yeah. enjoy. I enjoyed this. I, this it's been a great. You guys have a great setup here. I, people are just coming by and memorized, looking at the the rocket. And what I'm really impressed what you've done. You put that rocket out there where people can walk right up and put their hands on it. Thank you for that because it's and coming from you and and other promoters from there, but major respect and props from guys like you. I tell you this all the time from what I've learned from your industry, even Little Daddy Roth, all the stuff in the major industry. This is where I mirrored my life out there from going stuff because it's like, what would you like to see if you did it? And I said, man, if you can get evil stuff out there behind, it's not in front of glass, yes. people are going to freak out. And yeah. that's what you said right away. You said, I can't believe every town I go to, like, I can't believe you're letting people walk up to it. Right. And just to rock it, I mean, you know, it's already been through abuse, but most people won't let what you're, you can sit there. Yeah. Look inside it and see how the seats laid back. Evil yeah. laid right here, the original upholstery. Yeah. And you can put your hands on it. That's the, and and it's just it's it's really really nice. I yeah, think that's amazing you. what you did because most people would have ropes around. Nothing done. It's a bunch of that. You know we and we go through and we do this stuff, and exactly what you said. We get people like there. So many people every single time we go through and like oh can I you know I can't believe it. You know some people are you know some people get so excited they want to climb it and we had to yeah you got to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it is true. Some people just can't believe it, and you know the the. You know, anything from the veterans to the, to the other people that are coming to go and see it, they get so moved by it just seeing that. Right. And being able to put their hand close to it. Or, I mean, they're just because it was, it, it was, it was you a can superhero. sit there and put your hands where he put his hands. And one thing that if you haven't seen the rocket, the rocket alone is worth the exhibit. I mean, it's just yeah. such a piece of icon history of the 70s. But what most people don't get is how small it is. I thought I, yeah. You know, I, I think I saw that like two or three times over the years at Harley Museum, but it was always behind glass. You know what I mean? Right. They had it on a semi thing and it was behind glass and you could see it at the museum. And I don't think I really paid attention to it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mikey's up there. Yeah. I know. Mikey, uh, when we did the trigger gum. Yeah. Jump the world record. Mikey was there. Was he really? And he was his manager. And every time he, he did the warm ups, Mikey would be clocking him fast, slow. Fast. Really? Oh, yeah. I go way so, back with that guy. You go, really? Yeah. Well, yeah, he's. We're gonna be sitting down with him and his dad here in a little while with the yeah. uh, with the award from there, and he's got a heck of a history, man. We were we were talking to Mikey last night, and he was uh he got up, and he, he, you know what he did last night? What's that? This dude gets up and he invites us to the Starbucks after party, and me and the boys and I remember chilling out and kind of going back and forth and talking to Mikey at the bar, and Mikey's gonna love this part. And I said, uh, we're we're down talking to each other at the bar, and he's like, uh, he goes, hey, get over here. I said, what's up? And he goes, I gotta go sing. I said, what the hell are you talking about? And he goes, come on, asshole, I gotta go sing over here. And sure enough, he walks over and he, he goes right on the band. He sings Evil Knievel, the song <laughs> Evil Knievel. Was, well, we, got, we got the videos, and I'm like, it was so, it made my whole night. It made my whole weekend. Oh, my, I got, my guy, that guy saw, yes, you, my guy's got the video thrown. You gotta watch it, man. It's I great. got a story on him real quick. Oh, yeah. Well, you, uh, when I, time, when I ran the casino, the security came and said, uh, we're missing a golf cart. And last time we saw it, Mikey was on it. <laughs> so he probably had a few too many drinks no and way drove the golf cart like six miles up to the other bar <laughs> he goes should we do something i'll let him have fun man he's all right oh man that is so funny yeah he's a trip man i mean and everybody knows him everybody loves him it's just yeah. like you know he's such a good guy yeah you know and the career he's had also is just it's unbelievable too yeah you know where he's made it on his own i mean and he's still here today doing stuff Right. You know, I mean, I got to announce him for the Wall of Fire the last two nights and got to hang out with him. And I'm just like, man, this guy's great. Yeah. You just, no matter what it is, and he's always here smiling, talking to the kids, talking to people. It's, he's a good guy. He's, he's, a, really, good, he's yeah, a great he's guy. guy. He's he a really great guy. got yeah. a lot of respect for him. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of respect for him for everything that's going on. But no. And again, thank you for the uh, the notoriety and respect of giving it back for what I did there. It's, um, you guys, it, it, I'm telling you, my follow, is just follow this exhibit. I mean the road exhibit. They're going to several cities, and it's uh, it's, and if you're running an exhibit, get these guys in because everybody's gathered around this. There's got to be two thousand of the greatest cars in the world here, but they're all around that rocket. They're all around that rocket, and, yeah. and they came right at. I mean, they swarmed it. I mean, yesterday my guys were so busy they couldn't even believe it. Right, you know, and they're and they're coming everything for to hear the stories and everything we have going on. And we're leaving here tonight. Obviously, we're going to drive straight through tonight, and we're going to go through back home to Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. We set up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., run that show. Then we pretty much pack up on that one, and we got to be in Detroit Tuesday morning. Wow. 
Yeah, it's going to be a long run. So Detroit, we do that. We got a couple of great guys coming out, Chip Foose and all these other guys coming out to display our bike and some great deals we got going out with Triumph and stuff like that. So we'll be there for Detroit. And as soon as we leave Detroit, we go to Chicago next weekend. Wow. You got to yeah. love it. I love You know what? You got to love it. My boys get drained. You can see like Austin's tired. We're falling asleep and whatever. But I think the best part about all this is that I just love seeing people's faces when we come to each new town or a kid coming up to this. I think it's great when the young kids of today can see the, our toys from the 70s. Mm -hmm. And they're so intrigued by that. They don't have toys like that now. People don't play with toys anymore. So it's, it's so crazy. It's all electronics. Yeah. And I get them to show that. And the next show, we're going to have some stunt cycles out and show them what we can do and display them all the time. So they can really see what's going on. And these kids love it. I mean, to get them back, get these toys back out. Oh, yeah. Know? And I, I like the older guys that come up here. And it's like, oh, my gosh, I remember this. I remember that. I used to carry that lunchbox. And, yeah. Those like, are good stories, too. Yeah. yeah. When they, yeah. I mean, you, you just, what you just told me we were talking about when you had the uh, super fan. Mm -hmm. You owned the super fan for a while. Right. And you said right away, you're like, I was looking for a picture of you. Like, well, it's on a lunchbox. Absolutely. You know, I had in my collection the original drawings for the lunchbox the artist are you serious written, really yeah they're in the museum now they're I in the museum them, i gave them to the museum i had the original lunch pail wow um yeah i had all kinds of artifacts and i it, it had to go to the museum so they did such a great job they need it oh, all it's yeah it's um it's it, it's almost like it's a it's a it's a movement <laughs> i don't know when you go to that museum for me to go see it all and now for me to get partnered up with latham and all these guys to go do his yeah. stuff i'm so honored and just to hang out with Latham is just an yeah. honor. Yeah. Yeah. Latham's great. Oh my gosh, he's just he's just so great. My guys love it, you know, and uh, they love they love every bit of it and, and getting to know like, every connection and his his fire and his energy to go do all this stuff is so great. Yeah. And right away he just he just way the way he says everything so nonchalantly is so great. He's like the other day he's like, hey, you ever hear Tony Holden? I'm like, well, yeah, I've hold I heard an interview. He's like, I'm gonna give him a call. I think he should come over and do an interview with you. I'm like, well, do you think he's busy? He's like, no, Tony will come over. Uh, he <laughs> called me and I came. Yeah, yeah, he did. And then even, and then uh, it was so funny because Latham left this morning, head back to Dallas. Yeah. And he got in front of the hotel this morning. He's like, don't forget to call Tony. Don't hurt his feelings or nothing like that. I'm like, I'm like, hurt my feelings. I'm like, I'm like, I don't think you can hurt a box from hurt his feelings. Yeah. Like, he goes, no, John, just do it. Be real good about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, it's cool, man. It's always awesome. So. No, it's been great catching up with you. I hope to do a lot more work with you in the future with Latham and everybody else. And Absolutely. A lot more stuff to do. So. Well, I appreciate it. All right. Well, I'll let you get going on the rest of your day, sir, because it's finally nice here after the last three days. It's perfect outside. Yeah. It's perfect outside yeah. now today. So, well, again, thanks for being on the show. Right, brother. I look catching up with you. Great job. I appreciate you. All right. Thank you, sir. All right.